Baltimore Ravens head coach John Harbaugh's comments on Derrick Henry got a lot of Ravens fans very, very upset. And we're going to get into that shortly. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on. I appreciate y'all because we are officially at 76,000 subscribers. So we're getting a little closer to 100,000 subscribers. When we get there, who knows when it's going to be, but I appreciate y'all for supporting the channel. So after you subscribe, make sure you turn your notifications on so you don't miss a single video, single update on these Baltimore Ravens. And leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton. Now, John Harbaugh, his comments today on the king it got a lot of ravens flock up in arms very upset very heated very agitated very frustrated let's read exactly what those comments were he said uh, we rushed for 185 yards overall and a lot of that is lamar but that's the formula the formula is all the guys together it's not just the one guy so basically what i took from that part is that john harbaugh is saying like look it's going to be a collective, a group effort when we get our rushing yards. It's going to be contributions from so many different people. It could be a Lamar Jackson. It could be a Derrick Henry. It could be a Justice Hill. It could soon, hopefully, we miss you. It could be Keaton Mitchell. But anyway, continuing, he also said, we did not bring Derrick Henry to be the guy that gets the ball 30 times a game. He's done that before. That's really not the plan. That was the part where everybody was tripping over. And I get why, because with Derrick Henry, He's obviously a Hall of Fame running back. He's obviously had so much success in the NFL. Why? Because he would get like 30 carries a game with the Tennessee Titans. He would get enough carries and enough volume to where he would get stronger as the game went along. And we started to see that a little bit in the game against the Chiefs, but it obviously got stopped and it got capped at a certain point. But... In my opinion, a lot of it was due to the situation of the game. A lot of stuff changed situationally for the Baltimore Ravens. So Derrick Henry, he ended up becoming really a, a non-factor. But anyway, um, that got a lot of Ravens fans worried. Like, oh my goodness, here we go again. If this worked so good and so well for Derrick Henry, ain't that the reason you brought him in to actually be the feature back so he can get those 20, 25, 30 carries a game? And of course, it's not going to be every single game, but it all just depends on how the game is going. But you ain't bringing Derrick Henry to be no 5 to 8 to 10 and maybe not even to 12 uh, carry a game running back. No, you brought him in because he is the king and he got that nickname for a reason so a lot of Ravens fans were feeling like oh my goodness this go this is the Baltimore Ravens trying to fix something that's not broken again we've seen them do this time and time again why do they keep doing this I give you a couple of examples just random examples Tony Jefferson he was somebody that the Baltimore Ravens brought in as a free agent from the Arizona Cardinals and Tony Jefferson with the Arizona Cardinals he was a box safety almost like a linebacker almost but he was a box safety really close to the line of scrimmage making a lot of plays from around that area what did the Baltimore Ravens do they brought him in and they tried to have him as more of a drop back safety and a lot of times he struggled a lot of times he didn't look so good they wondered why and it's because hey you tried to fix something that was not broken speaking of safeties Matt Elam, oh, that was another one right there. Mm, mm, mm. I feel like the Baltimore Ravens, Ravens wasted so much of potential with Matt Elam. I feel like they killed his confidence from jump because Matt Elam, he was more of a strong safety, also more of a box safety, a physical safety, similar to Tony Jefferson. But what did the Baltimore Ravens do? They were trying to make him replace Ed Reed. And they drafted him in 2013, their first round pick, pick number 32. And they moved him to free safety. They had him dropping back and roaming and whatnot. And that was not his game. And that destroyed his career before it even got started. And there's some other names that we can go over. And th there's some names that we can go over where the Baltimore Ravens did change something. And it ended up working. Like, look at Pat Ricard. Pat Ricard was a defensive lineman. But they changed him to a fullback. And it has work worked out quite well for Pat Ricard. So it's not like every single case where Baltimore Ravens try to change something that somebody does, then it doesn't work. But... This is what Ravens fans were feeling with Derrick Henry because they're like, man, he had so much success before. Why would John Harbaugh say that? Well, let's also look at what John Harbaugh had to say in addition to that. He said the plan is Derrick, Lamar, Mark, Isaiah, Zay, Bate, Nelly. That's the plan in this offense going forward. So basically, John Harbaugh is saying that we're going to get contributions from everybody. It ain't going to just be Derrick Henry. He ain't going to be the feature person of this offense. We got a lot of people that we can get it from. He also said, so I think that evaluation of the run game will be best made over the course of the season. And I'm very confident there's going to be games where Derrick is going for 100 yards or more in a game. And you're going to be asking me, why has A. Flowers only got two catches? So with that, he's saying like, look, Derrick going to go off sometimes. It's going to be games where he goes off and maybe the wide receivers, they not eating like that because he's going off so much. Now for me personally, I ain't got a problem with that. Get it how you get it. Get it how you get it. Play winning football straight up. And if it's working, then keep at it. 
But anyway, continuing, he also said, that's going to happen over the course of the season, and that's going to be good for us. That's what we want it to be. We want to be unpredictable that way. But anyway, back to Harbaugh's comments about Derrick Henry. Um, I don't think you should trip over it. And I, I don't think you should just be ready to go off on Harbaugh about it. The reason being because, you know, John Harbaugh always talks about competitive advantage. And he looks for any type of competitive advantage that he can possibly get every single week, every single day, every single hour. We, as Ravens fans, we will get so frustrated at what he says about the injury report. Like even today, for example, Lamar Jackson, he wasn't at practice. So I'm thinking, okay, Harbaugh got a presser. We're going to hear about what Lamar Jackson's status update is. Nope. Harbaugh said, you can refer to Wednesday, Wednesday's uh, injury report about that. Kyle Vinoy, who I was a thousand percent sure we were going to get an update on him, was his status because he suffered a more serious injury in the Chiefs game the other night. I was expecting, okay, Harbaugh going to clear that up for us. Harbaugh said, nope, you can refer to Wednesday's injury report on that one. Harbaugh does not like giving out injury information early. Um, he does not like giving it out at all because he's continued to say over the years, I, I, I try to have every single competitive advantage I possibly can. Now, I took that with the Derrick Henry comments and put them together. Why would Harbaugh come out here and say what they expect Derrick Henry to be for them? Why would he come out and say that? That's not Harbaugh's style. Harbaugh doesn't like to give stuff away like that. Harbaugh likes to surprise us, so to speak. But he likes to try to build up that competitive advantage. That's why with his words, I ain't tripping over that. And we already know the old saying how it goes. Actions speak a whole lot louder than any words ever could. So Harbaugh can get up there and say all that and say that, all this, but it's about what they actually do in the game. Now, I know some Ravens fans like, hey, we don't see Harbaugh, especially come playoff time, where they will not use the running back. They don't care who it is. They don't care who's back there. They will not use their running backs in playoff time. So Harbaugh, even though he's speaking it, he's unexecuted it, and he's, he's used his actions to do that same thing before. But hopefully this is different because, again, with Derrick Henry, he's special. Not to say the other running backs that the Baltimore Ravens had before they were not special because they were. Gus Edwards, he could have been special, but the Baltimore Ravens didn't respect him. J.K. Dobbins, he could have been special, but the injuries got ahead of him. And there's a lot of other names we could go over, but this Derrick Henry, he's somebody that's established and already been special. Why would the Baltimore Ravens bring Derrick Henry in? Bring this, I can't say high price free agent, but they are paying him a significant amount of money this year. Why would they bring him in and not use him? You have to. Now, I also get Harbaugh's part about, like, look, we're going to get it how we get it, and we're going to get it from everybody because that's how you want your offense to be. Like he said, you want your offense to be unpredictable. You don't want your offense to be one-dimensional. You don't want your, where your offense is like, all right, if they stop this guy, it's game over. No. So with that part, Harbaugh is spot on. But with the part about Derrick Henry, they don't expect him to get 25, 30 carries a game. I just think it's, it's just talk. And he don't want to put everything out there. He's not going to put everything out there. He's not going to be like, all right, what the Baltimore Ravens game plan for Derrick Henry is, we expect him to get 23 carries a game. And da -da -da. No, he's not going to say that. And he shouldn't say that. But my point, again, watch for the actions. Don't worry about the presses so much. Don't worry about what Harbaugh's saying in, in these press conferences about Derrick Henry, this and that, and the third so much. But watch how it plays out during the season. Now with all that being said, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Do you know what this is? No, really, do you know what this is? It is the ultimate team keep it clean tool and probably something that you should live by. Today's show is sponsored by Tushy because it's about time that you stop trying to keep your backside clean with just toilet paper. Now that's what we've normally done because we're used to it, but does it really get the cleaning job done the right way or does it just smear stuff around? Yuck. If you wash with a Tushy bidet, you get a targeted stream of fresh water that keeps you two times cleaner than wiping ever could. This routine with toilet paper is old, outdated, it's done. Let's retire it. It's time to upgrade that so you can feel fresh, confident, and extra clean. The setup, easy. The results, game changing. Once you experience a tushy bidet, your cheeks won't ever settle for less. Now I gotta admit, when I first tried the bidet, I was hesitant. Cause I heard about them before, but I ain't never used one myself. So it was a little bit weird and it was different, but it's almost like the process of washing your hands, but with your cheeks so where you just feel so much better and refreshed afterwards so i'm bidet all the way and it comes with some great benefits as well it is about cleanliness but it doesn't just stop there tushy is great for your health too regular use can help prevent chronic issues like hemorrhoids utis and irritation plus every single tushy bidet comes with a 30-day hassle-free return and a 12-month warranty so one-time purchase that'll change your life but how can you get your hands on a tushy bidet well i'ma tell you so you can feel shower fresh when you need it most and join the two million butts who already switched to tushy for a limited 
good time. Our listeners get 10% off their first bidet order when you use code ENGRAVEN at checkout. That's 10% off your first bidet order at hellotushy.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-T-U-S-H-Y.com with promo code ENGRAVEN. We already team keep it clean, but let's take it to a whole nother level with Tushy. Now we're here at my favorite part of these videos where we feature your questions. If you ever like to be a part of this for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. Uh, and if you don't, you can just send your email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. No other emails, just teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. This first comment, really, not a question, it came from my guy, Brian, who is actually a Team Keep It Clean patron. He said, Engraver, check this out. And this was the illegal formations in week one, excluding Monday Night Football because it hasn't been played yet. It'll be played tonight. And this is something that I was concerned about. Like Baltimore Ravens got called for illegal formation like five times and it was crazy. So I was wondering, like, OK, did it happen around the league at all? Like and if if they did, then how many times did it get called on other people and whatnot? But anyway, it says the Ravens got called for illegal formation five times. Every other NFL team combined got called 15 times. That's it. Combined. For all, well, all 29 other teams, because there's still two more teams that play tonight. But all 29 teams combined got called for it 15 times. They made an example out of the Baltimore Ravens. A very bad, frustrating example, but an example nonetheless. It says the average amount of illegal formation penalties per team, Ravens had five. Every other NFL team combined, point fifty two. And I know a lot of people try to say, hey, it's not the refs. Refs ain't had nothing to do with it. But they certainly did. Next question came from my guy, Ahmad. He said, what's up, Mr. Engraven? This is Ahmad. I've been watching videos since last year. Hey, I appreciate that, Ahmad. Thank you, man. He said, I wish I could have found your page sooner, and I hope you and the kids are doing well. Thank you, man. He said, I've been going through relationship and family issues. Watching your videos makes me happy to hear your thoughts and pump for the Ravens. Hey, man, um, I appreciate you. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, and I, I, I hope that everything does work itself out. Uh, a lot of times we we want a quick fix to so many issues, so many problems that we may be going through. And a quick fix is nice. But with a lot of things, a lot of more serious issues, a lot of more serious uh, problems that we have, they just take time. They take time. So hopefully with time, everything that you're dealing with and everything that you're going through, uh, it'll get cleared up and everything will be A-OK. I appreciate you, though, man. He also said, uh, what are your final thoughts about the Ravens uh, here on out? Such as record wise, do you really think Lamar could win a ring the way he wants to win it and also Baltimore as a whole? I certainly do. I certainly do. Um, this game against the Kansas City Chiefs, it was one game, but you look at the AFC North, uh, Baltimore Ravens, even in their one loss, they look better than the entire AFC North. And they look better than a lot of other NFL teams. So, and this could possibly be their worst game of the season. Uh, because this was sort of like a preseason game for them because this is the first time all the starters are playing together and stuff so i think both just a few adjustments few things here and there even without any adjustments say look, look at that game against the kansas city chiefs even without any adjustments they were inches away from possibly winning a game or going to overtime or they might have went for the two-point conversion and lost but they were inches away for, from being right there i mean they were literally right there uh, with, with no adjustments too because again remember Lamar Jackson drove the, the Baltimore Ravens down the field like 90 yards. And the play before, like we talked about yesterday, that could have mentally drained Lamar Jackson. He could have been like, done. Oh, man, I, done, I, I missed Rashad Bateman. I completely missed him. Oh, my goodness, I'm done. I, I can't do it. He could have been done after that. But he came back, literally came back the very next play with four seconds left, found Isaiah Likely in the back of the end zone, threw a perfect pass. But Isaiah Likely just couldn't get the foot down. So it showed me like, hey, Ravens tight, tighten a few things up here and there. They'll be ready for whatever. So I definitely think they can get to the Super Bowl this year. Players the Ravens need to dominate more. Next question came from my guy Joshua. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the family are doing well. And congratulations on your new baby girl. Hey, I appreciate that, Josh. He said, also, what's up, team? Keep it clean. Hope you all are good physically and mentally. I appreciate that even more. I, I appreciate y'all checking on the family, the team Keep It Clean family, because we all need it. We all need to be checked in on from time to time. So I, I appreciate that a lot, man. He said, now for my question. After seeing everyone play week one, I really feel good about us going forward. I agree. He said, part one of my question is, what do you think we need to fix going into week two and the rest of the season? Um, straight up offensive line. O o offensive line is the, the biggest issue in my opinion. Um, second biggest issue, I would say, on offense, getting Rashad Bateman more involved. On defense, uh, getting Trent Simpson more involved, having him do more. Uh, he said, part two, if you were the GM of the Baltimore Ravens and could trade for whoever and how many players, uh, who, who would it be? Oh, my goodness. That's like, that's a cheat code. Trade, trade for whoever and however many players? Oh, my goodness. I'm getting Tyreek Hill. I'm getting Justin Jefferson. But I, I, I'm going to make it more easy. Like, if I could pick 
I'm going to pick two on offense, two on defense. Uh, one, I'm going to go Tyreek Hill. And then two, I'm going to go maybe Quentin Nelson uh, or Trent Williams. Um, on defense, um, hmm. oh, at defense, I am going to go <laughs> Miles Garrett and TJ Watt because that will give us a crazy pass rush. Because at safety, we good. At cornerback, we good too. Uh, at linebacker, I think we'll be good as well. But pass rush, and I know we could be good there too. Like, hey, they, they looked a lot better. So, yeah, that's what I would go with though. Anyway, he said, part one, I think we need to either trade for a right guard or try and play Ben Cleveland. I don't know what's up with the Ravens and Ben Cleveland, but they need to fix it because when he comes in for Zeitlin, when he was out, he played really well. Yeah, he did. He did. So, again, maybe he got beef with Harbaugh. So he said, you can go back to the Steelers game in 2022 in Pittsburgh. He did his thing in last season, etc. Also, Zach Orr needs to keep Simpson and Wiggins in for more. Okay, see? I, I should have read it because me and you with, with Trent Simpson, we on the same page. I think a lot of us Ravens fans are. Anyway, he said, um, Zach Orr needs to keep Simpson and Wiggins in uh, for our defense to come together and dominate. Part two, I think we could trade for Clowney. Oh, yeah, oh, I, mm, I would love that. But I, I think Clowney just wants to be home. Because, again, that's why he signed in, in the first place. Obviously, more money, but that's where Clowney's from. Uh, he's from there, and he got family there and stuff. So, yeah, so I, I don't, I, while I would love that, I just don't think it'll happen. He said, uh, if we can reconstruct some other players on the roster, especially if we don't know how long Kyle Vinoy will be out and seeing how the Panthers got blown out. I bet you Clowney doesn't want to be there for long, LOL. Sorry for the long question. Hope everything's good. Again, hope you have a great rest of your week and year, and go Ravens. Shout out to you, Josh. Appreciate it. Ravens, AFC West. Next question came from my guy, Corey. He said, man, what up, Engraven? It's been a while. It has been a while, Corey. Where you been at, my friend? Uh, so, so majority of us uh, are only here for the Ravens, but... I'm rooting for the Chargers this year with Jim, J.K., and Gus. I was happy to see J.K. Dobbins running strong yesterday and had a few big runs. Oh, yeah, there was one run where it reminded me, I think it was against the Patriots, where J.K. Dobbins, I think he had first came back, and he was running. He broke out in the open field, but then he just slowed down and got caught from behind. That happened to him yesterday. But he had a really good game. I think he had only like 10 carries for like 100-something yards. So he was doing his thing. But anyway. He said, I'm hoping he does extremely well and stays healthy all year. Yes, we do hope that for JK for sure. Uh, he said, as I'm typing this, I realize I have a thing for number 27 running backs. JK, Ray Rice is still one of my favorite, but Eddie George was my guy back in the day too. Since I was an original Titans fan and came to the Ravens once, Eric McNair did. Okay, we will. We glad that you're here. Uh, he said, anyways, I also hope the Chargers can beat Kansas City at least once, and maybe they're both fighting for top crown of their division. Ooh, I don't see that happening. <laughs> Not the Chargers and Kansas City. I think Kansas City going to run away with it. But like they do every year. But hey, you never know. I wouldn't be mad if they are. If Chargers and KC fighting for the top spot in the AFC, West, oh yeah, have at it, have at it. He said, I know it seems like Chiefs will win the division easily again, especially with the league and the refs in their back pocket. <laughs> Let's just be real about it. But it's a long season, and Chargers, along with the other teams, don't want them to three p. And I'd be happy if they didn't make the playoffs with a healthy Mahomes. Again, very unlikely, but a man can dream. You hear my daughter crying. You hear her crying? She she she's crying tears of joy. Now actually that's that's not tears of joy. That that would be tears of frustration if the Chiefs won another. If they three peated. They already got three Super Bowls, but if they three peated got one three in a row, oh my goodness. You, that crying that you hear right now, it would be a lot worse. And it will be coming from me, not even her. Anyway, he said, uh, lastly, I was very impressed with the games this weekend. I agree with your video that, yes, the Steelers won, but they were looking very strong. And Mr. PQ wasn't very dominant with all that trash talk, but it's only one game. Yeah, yeah, it's only one game. I, I didn't really notice him. But, yeah, he, it's one game. So he could have he had a quiet game against the, um, the Falcons yesterday. But then in the next game, I don't know who Steelers play next, but whoever they play next, he could go out there and kill it. So we'll just see. It's, it's a, we got to remember, it's a 17-game schedule well for now soon it's gonna be 18 soon enough but anyway he said dallas made the browns look bad patriots surprisingly beat the Bengals in a low scoring game caleb williams made a fun comeback well caleb williams ain't do nothing <laughs> he ain't do nothing the defense made a fun fun comeback caleb williams ain't do nothing but again it's one game uh he said eagles look like they're a super bowl team now just wait and see how the jets play tonight call me a hater but if we don't win it all this year i'm rooting for anyone and everyone but the chiefs oh yeah be a hater be a hater for sure be <laughs> for sure, man. We don't need them trees winning another one, man. He said, and just like Jordan Love. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. He said, and just like Jordan Love, I'm out. Catch you again in a few weeks. All right, appreciate you.